Woke Silicon Valley Bank donated over $73 million to Black Lives Matter related social justice groups before it collapsed, while failed Signature Bank gave 850000 So that's where your money went. If you're wondering why Silicon Valley Bank failed and where's your money at, there it is. You can ask Black Lives Matter where your money went. That's they what they were prioritizing. They gave their money to ESG. They bankrupted it, and then they just bail it out with taxpayer money. It's the most corrupt and in remember, the history <laughs> book. If, if this is recorded in the history books, which I hope it will be, it'll be seen as like the most corrupt no, no, scandal, no. financial scandal in U.S. history. When the communist takeover happens in the United States yeah. and lasts for 100 years or whatever, after it falls, the people who survive will write about how they took over by using private institutions to fund far left extremism and then have taxpayer dollars fund out those organizations. Think about this. A bank gives $73 million to far left extremism, collapses, the taxpayer bails them out. That's how you launder taxpayer money into ideological subversion. Mm -hmm. Crafty stuff. It's huh? like taxation without representation. I didn't, I I didn't mean, ask to be it's have my money sent towards that crap. Well, that you didn't do your... What they would say is you didn't do your own research about where this company is uh, doing doing business because they probably had a prospectus or they probably put out a prospectus that had all of this stuff laid out. But it's it. the taxpayer bailout that I didn't I didn't oh, sign whoa. up for. Right. Tough. But it's but it's but it's <laughs> it's only That's sort of government. Listen, listen, it's only yeah. sort of taxpayer funded. They're going to use the FDIC which is paid into from banks, but they're supposed to use the money for the little guy and they're giving it to the billionaires and the millionaires. So okay. it is it is taking away from you but in a different way. And how it affects the taxpayer when they're like, it's not going to cost a taxpayer a dime. It will not. I repeat, it will not. They're lying because what actually is going to happen is the financial damage from all of this is already rippling out to everyone. The fact that stocks fell in these banks means retirement accounts are taking hits. And that means older people are probably not looking at their budgets being like, I guess we don't eat this month. So, yes, it absolutely does hit everybody when they do this. And, and, and that's their, their argument is. Well, we can't have the social contagion or we can't have the, the banking contagion spread around and destroy the economy, can we? I say, yeah, we can. Well, tough luck. So the average American household has $10,000 in cash in their reserves. East Palestine, the median household income was $41,000 a year. That's what normal America, that's how normal Americans live. Now, 95% of depositors had over the $250,000 maximum for federal insurance. So you are talking the uber rich of the uber rich based on American, based on the data for American uh, solvency, right? And liquidity. So you're talking the richest of the rich. This is a bailout of the richest of the rich. Yep. But now, it, these depositors... And, and they're woke, too, to make and it worse. And they're woke they're as the hell. Like, yeah, the, if, they were, right. if they were rich and libertarian, I might be like, well, you They're know. the laptop class. They're the worst. That's right. They're the worst. So, you're ta so, so put this in context here. It took the government uh, nigh on a month to lift a finger for East Palestine where they nuked a bunch of little children and poisoned their water... And they had this. They had this locked up by Saturday. All this Yellen had this done in an emergency meeting by Saturday. Joe Biden showed billions up at of nine, dollars, nine in the morning, bailing out the richest and the wokest of the woke because they're Joe, the donors. Joe Biden so gets up gross. at nine in the morning for an emergency yeah, announcement, right. and Jen Psaki is like, he doesn't do this normally. He's a night owl, and I'm like, yeah. this mf'er flew across the planet to give a half a billion dollars to Ukraine, yep. and he didn't lift a finger for East Palestine, but he wakes up at the crack of dawn to make sure he can assure all the woke Silicon Valley investors, your money's safe. What a piece of garbage. You you know, but he's talking garbage. to the people who vote for him and the people who fund him, and that's why he does it. What? The people of East Palestine voted for Trump so he could give to one of the things. You're you're both right, but but everybody here knows that like to make the wealthy suffer means that the poor suffer more every single time. Like when if you if you really want to hurt the wealthy, if you want, and this is part of why socialism doesn't work. Right. Like the idea is get the money from the wealthy. Right. But when you get the money from the wealthy, the people that don't have any money, they get smashed. And it's literally that's why communism and socialism doesn't work, because when you hurt the producers, the, the wealthy are always the ones that are producing. Like the reason they have they have money and stuff is because they're doing stuff. So as much as the incentive is like or the gut feeling is like make them suffer. Right. Like that's what you want. You want them to pay. But it's going to hurt the poor people. And I'm not sure that it's worth it. I don't for, you know. I, I don't, don't want it. I want to suffer. I don't want anyone to suffer. Uh, first and foremost, the major, the major problem here, the, the the major problem here, first and foremost, is constitutional. OK, so Article one and two of the Constitution, Congress controls the purse. Congress passed a law to ensure two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of deposits. That is a law by Congress. How Joe Biden 
has the bloody cheek to think that he can just go through and rewrite this law and spend this money and turn on this faucet Trial balloon. is beyond me. Think now, I, I if, tell you, they, they did it with the vaccine mandate. They the did ATF. it with student loans. They did it with student loans. The ATF. Now he's getting smacked in the PP on both of those. The but a- but, but, the, but the, here, we, here we go again. He's rewriting the Constitution in real time. The ATF passed a law without Congress. They made an object illegal. Uh, braces for, yes. for, for pistols. Yes. They're saying that you can go to jail, but they never actually had Congress pass a law banning such an object. These are all trial balloons. But more, more worse still, they are grains of sand being added to the heap where the executive branch of the government says we can make anything we want legal or legal or illegal and no one will stop us. So it's not it's not just the things you, you talked about, but you're correct. Right. The, the, the financial stuff like the FDIC, him saying, I can just give the money if I want. What are you going to do about it? The, hell he- the fact that he can just take money and give it away. He didn't have those powers, but who will stop him? Who's right. supposed to stop That's him? That's exactly right. Who's yeah. supposed to stop I don't him? Know. Congress. Congress. So Dude, Congress at, is Article 1 Supreme for Court. Reason. Again, people don't understand. A Congress is Article 1. Congress was supposed to be the important branch. Yeah. Article 2 is the presidency. That was supposed to be like the backwater. Military. Yep. That was supposed yeah. to be the backwater. That's why, they put, that's why they put old Washington in charge. Old Washington. To kind of putz around and talk to the talk to different countries and putz talk about around. the talk about the military and to chew on his wooden teeth, and Congress was where the action was, yeah. and that's the way it was designed because of course Congress itself is far more representative of all of us. You can get a dumbass president, but it's hard. You know, Congress is going to be a, a lot. Uh, uh, we saw this with the M- McCarthy fight, right? Congress is going to be where real populism happens. Dude, St- we were at Congress on Friday last Friday, yeah. and we we're talking to Matt Gates and totally Steve based. Bannon came in, yeah. and Steve Bannon was like, "Get ready, guys, because on Monday they're going to come in and they're going to start asking you that they need this bailout." It was the next morning they did yep. it without congressional they didn't authority. Ask what they was? They didn't ask. That's I so so silly, poor silly Steve Bannon, <laughs> who thought they would actually go to Congress this time to ask. Instead, yeah. they just went, That's right. it's done. That's right. It's amazing. That it indicates yeah. <laughs> that they're going to do it again in some other fashion, that they'll be like, oh, your dollars that you thought were dollars, they're, they're digital currency now. Don't ask questions. Right. And who's supposed to question? Let me it's tell Congress. You, let, me, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Uh, I have a Spanish friend. And in 2012, at the end of 2012, I went to Spain because they're having big protests. And I asked my Spanish activist friend why the protests had been going on and persisting. And she told me it all started with the euro. So this is many years ago for these young people. Unemployment, why unemployment was so very high, why the economy was destroyed. And what she said was the currency of Spain was, I think it was the peseta. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. And you'd go out to your, your, you wake up in the morning, you'd go to your cafe, you'd grab a newspaper, you'd grab a muffin or something and a coffee. And each of those items was one peseta. The newspaper was one, the muffin was one, the coffee was one, three peseta, and you got everything you need. Then they decided to roll out the euro. And they wanted it normalized for all of Europe. Mm. She said one day they woke up and the newspaper cost one euro instead. The muffin cost one euro and the coffee cost one euro. The only problem is in order to actually buy the euro, you needed three peseta per one euro. So all of your goods, everything jumped up three times their cost overnight. And then all of a sudden the economy started falling apart. And then young people couldn't find jobs. They went into a financial crisis, started protesting. With the central bank digital currency, we may see something similar, but perhaps they will try and incentivize people into giving up their freedom by saying, well, if you click the I agree button on the app, you get 1.5 times your deposit. So if you had $100 in the bank, you'll have 150 FedCoin. And FedCoin can be used anywhere because it is legal tender and must be accepted by all businesses. Oh, and they'll be like, if you don't buy gasoline this month, we'll pay you a thousand dollars kind of crap of their. Fake oh, 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 coin. oh, 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 yeah. Fed coin centralized command bank is going to have like a thing where it's like you can opt in for lower my energy costs. And then it'll be like it will show you your coins going up very slowly. And it'll be like by not using electricity, you're earning. And then it will show you the coin. Yeah, ticking. You'll flip your lights off right. and it'll tick a little faster. Yep. And you'll be like, yep. oh, all the things I can. And That's really right. what, it, what it is, it's the amount of money that they take out of your per month credit no, 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 no. comes it's, down. It's because while it's going up, what they're not telling you is they're also inflating the coin yeah. by producing more. So it's not really going up. Yeah, that's the thing about these. They're not going to be on a blockchain. These central bank digital currencies are not planned from what I've read it to be on matter. a blockchain. So there's not going to be trackable. No one's going to know what well, the, they'll the malfeasance them. in the background. Yeah, they'll be printing it. We won't know. That's the, that's the problem. There's no, there's no incentive for the government to put their currency. I mean, right now, the 
the audit, we, we, we can't get the Federal Reserve audited, never mind control over the Federal Reserve. There's no way a federal coin is going to be on a public open blockchain. That's why, that's why Bitcoin is great. Like as much as people want to go ahead and crap on crypto and stuff like that, I get it. There are people who don't understand it, whatever. Um, the great thing about Bitcoin is the fact that it's decentralized, that it's international, that it's not controlled by anyone. There's no single entity that controls it. And I, I know that there's people super focused on like the dollar amount of a coin. That's not what the important part of Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a protocol like email. Except right? <clears throat> Bitcoin may be the precursor intentionally designed to bring about central, centralized digital currencies in that for, the, for, for all global currency, there is gold. Gold is a store of value. Bitcoin, they say, is digital gold. Not everybody agrees, but Bitcoin, they say, is digital gold. And so maybe these powers wanted Bitcoin to exist. They wanted people to get very, very wealthy off of it. They wanted to have an idea in the public that if you bought Bitcoin, you were rich now. Then when they roll out Fedcoin, they're going to be like, don't miss the train. Because if you <laughs> buy Fedcoin, it's going to be worth 10 times what it is in three days. Are you going to sit back? They're going to be in the FOMO. And, and it's going to work. Let's jump to this next story. This next It's actually 8.30. We, I know we're going to have an incoming we call. Have this, uh, we so have James, this story. So James is finishing up a radio interview. He'll call at 8.40. 8.40? Beautiful. Oh, no. Well, well, let me say, we'll keep talking about Bitcoin. I, I want to <laughs> give a little uh, time capsule to the future after the dust settles and you guys start creating a new currency. Make a currency that deflates automatically the longer it sits in your account. So you're encouraged to spend it to create... You mean literal so currency? Lines. No. What's so that? I had a, yeah, you, a deflationary do currency... It encourages uh, circulation. Yeah, Deflationary well, means its value goes up. Uh, well, it actually, so if you have a dollar and it sits there, tomorrow you'll about, have 99 cents. That's, that's not deflationary. deflationary. That's, inflationary. That, that's inflationary. That's literally what the dollar does. Yeah. And they do it for the purpose no. of trying. Yes. I'm talking about a coin that actually disappears into nothingness. Right, 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 so right. You're, you're, you're basically, that's, that's what, like a that's what the dollar does. <laughs> Dude, One dollar no, no. in 1908. Is worth uh, a, do a dollar today is worth like what three cents compared to a dollar a hundred years ago? Yeah, but that's because they printed a bunch more. But in this right. situation, you'd print twenty million coins. It's the same thing. It's, the it's same in, in reverse. It's the same thing. It's the same. No, function, no, it's yeah. a deflationary currency. It's the same function. It's the yeah, same and you function. Just, you just you just don't understand, but you're describing the same thing. You would never print a new one. You'd yes. have them all uh, right. built exactly. off yes. the bat. Uh -huh. Right. You're just describing a different means of doing the same thing. Yeah. And it's not deflationary. Deflationary means the value goes up, not down. The value goes up because they're harder to find. Yeah. I guess. But you could also create more of them. I guess you're actually right on that one. You, if, if, if the money disappears, then it becomes more scarce and more valuable. So you're not actually losing any value and there is no incentive to spend. In fact, the incentive is to hold on to it because it's disappearing. But, they can create, <laughs> but then you'll be able to create more of it and it'll constantly keep disappearing. So it's like you don't want to have so it. So then it's like having an expiration date on your money to, yeah, yeah. to increase the velocity. Because the because well, biggest James problem is Ingram. wealth hoarding. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.